Good morning and blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is June the 14th of the year 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we are continuing our study of the book of One Enoch, and today we are in chapter 49. Now, if you'd like to read along with us, I'll place a link in the description box below. And so I invite you to find your place in the book of First Enoch, chapter 49, along with your Bibles, for we'll be looking at several different passages this morning. Now, keep in mind, we are looking at the parables of Enoch. Enoch is broken into five sections, which would be the book of Watchers, the book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the book of Dreams and Visions, and the Epistle of Enoch. And the book of parables is going to take us up to chapter 71. And so today we're right in the middle of the second parable. And Enoch is enlightening us on the things to come. So if you have the book of First Enoch in front of you, as well as your Bibles, let's begin with chapter 49. For wisdom is poured out like water, and glory felleth not before him forevermore. For he is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness." Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And so Enoch says here in verse 2 of 49, He is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness, and unrighteousness shall disappear as a shadow and have no continuance, because the elect one, and this would be Jesus, standeth before the Lord of spirits, and his glory is forever and ever, and his might unto all generations. And in him dwells the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit which gives insight, and the spirit of understanding and of might. Look at what Isaiah tells us in his book in chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is speaking of the Messiah. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And so back to Enoch, verse 3, it says, In him, Messiah, Jesus, dwells the spirit of wisdom and the spirit which gives insight and the spirit of understanding and of might, and the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning around verse 13, it tells us that those who are asleep in Christ shall be raised. And when it uses the word sleep here, it's speaking of death. You will also see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 6, and verses 51, John chapter 11, verse 11, John chapter 5, verse 28, Job chapter 3, verses 4 through 19, John 14, 3, and Job 14, 12. Now, there are other places in the Bible as well, but what we see here is that oftentimes the word dead or death is referred to as sleep. And even Enoch uses that in his text, the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness, and he will judge the secret things. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14 says, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Romans 2.16 says, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And so again in verse 4 of 49 in 1 Enoch, he will judge the secret things. And none shall be able to utter a lying word before him, for he is the elect one before the Lord of spirits, according to his good pleasure. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, for it is God who works in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. 
I trust you're beginning to see how much of the Bible is in the book of Enoch and how much the book of Enoch is in the Bible. For that's the purpose of sharing these passages out of the Bible with you, corresponding with the book of 1 Enoch, complementing one another. Well, we're told in chapter 50, in those days, a change shall take place for the holy and elect. Do you remember where Paul told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Well, that's exactly what Enoch is telling us here. In those days, a change shall take place for the holy and elect, and the light of days shall abide upon them, and glory and honor shall turn to the holy. On the day of affliction, on which evil shall have been treasured up against the sinners, and the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of spirits. And he will cause the others to witness this, that they may repent and forego the works of their hands. They shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of spirits. Yet through his name shall they be saved. Acts 4.12 says there's no other name under heaven by which a man must be saved other than the name of Jesus the Christ. And Enoch says the Lord of spirits will have compassion on them for his compassion is great. In Exodus chapter 34, we're given the story where Moses wants to see the Lord in all of his fullness and in all of his glory. And Yahweh complies. And in verse six, we're told what Moses saw. The Lord passed by before Moses and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. And so you could compile all of that into one simple word, and that's the word we're given here in Enoch. His compassion is great. We have done nothing to deserve his mercy. We have done nothing to deserve his favor. And yet he offers and pours his compassion out unto us. Back to chapter 50 of 1 Enoch, verse 4. And he is righteous also in his judgment. David tells us in Psalm chapter 7, verse 8, The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. O oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God tries the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Back to verse 4 of 1 Enoch chapter 50. He is righteous also in his judgment. Again, back to Paul, who must have been a frequent reader of the book of 1 Enoch. Look what he says in verse 22 of chapter 9 of Romans. What if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. So basically what this is saying is in order for God's righteousness to be appreciated to such a high degree, it has to be compared to wickedness. You see, the light isn't as bright until it shines through the darkness. The blacker the darkness, the whiter the light. And that's what God is saying. He's saying, in order for my righteousness to be seen by man, it must be compared to the darkness. And in comparing it to the darkness, it shines brightly. It would be the same in comparing ourselves to others. If we compare ourselves to our neighbor, our friends, our mom and dad, we might appear to be good people. But how do we look when we compare ourselves to Osama bin Laden or to Hitler? Well, we shine brightly compared to the darkness and the evil that is in their souls. But then when we stand in front of the glory of the risen Lord and we compare ourselves to him, how dark we look and how bright he looks. And that's what we're told here in First Enoch. It says, in the presence of his glory, unrighteousness also shall not maintain itself. 
At his judgment, the unrepentant shall perish before him. And from henceforth, I will have no mercy on them, saith the Lord of spirits. Chapter 51. And in those days shall the earth also give back that which has been entrusted to it. And Sheol also shall give back that which it has received. And hell shall give back that which it owes. This should remind us of verse 13 in chapter 20 of Revelation, which says, The sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. So all who have died, wherever they may be, land or sea or even in the grave, all will be given up unto the Lord to stand in final judgment. Verse 5. And in those days the elect one shall arise, and he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them. In other words, there's going to be a separation between the righteous and the sinner, the wheat and the chaff, the lamb and the goats. And that's what we're told in Matthew chapter 25, verse 32 and 33. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And that's what Enoch is telling us here in verse 2. He will choose the righteous and holy from among them. From all those who have been released from Sheol, from hell, from earth, from sea, as they stand before the Almighty, he will choose the righteous and holy from among them. He will separate them. For the day is drawn nigh that they should be saved. And the elect one, Jesus, shall in those days sit on my throne, and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel. For the Lord of spirits has given them to him and hath glorified him. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says, Wherefore God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name, that at that name every knee will bow things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so Enoch confirms this in his writing, for he says the Lord of spirits has given them to him. He's given the righteous unto Jesus and hath glorified Jesus. And in those days shall the mountains leap like rams, and the hills also shall skip like lambs satisfied with milk and the faces of all the angels in heaven shall be lighted up with joy do you remember that joyous occasion at the birth of jesus when the angels sang hallelujah friends that cannot begin to equal or, or compare to the praises and the joy that will be seen among the angels on this great day it says in verse 5 the earth shall rejoice and the righteous shall dwell upon it, being the earth, and the elect shall walk thereon. Remember in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, we're told we will be given a new heaven and a new earth, and that's where we'll reside, is upon the new earth. Back in a state of perpetual bliss, at the original intention of God, in what we would call the Garden of Eden, or Jesus called paradise. This will be our home throughout eternity. And Jesus will reign as King of Kings, and we will serve him gladly and joyously. What a privilege, friends. What a divine privilege. Well, we're going to end our study today there. I know that a lot of scripture was thrown in us today, but it's important for us to identify what the Bible says in relation to the book of 1 Enoch. Because that's the purpose of our study. Does the Bible confirm the book of 1st Enoch? Or does it contradict the book of 1st Enoch? Does the book of 1st Enoch complement the Bible? Or does it contradict the Bible? And what we have seen up until this point is that they complement one another. Now, as we've read these passages from the book of 1st Enoch this morning, if there are verses that you can recall that I didn't point out, please post them in the description box below. Because as zealous as I am to bring you these passages from the Bible, as the old saying goes, two heads are better than one. So I invite your input and I invite your comments. Now, friends, I pray that you'll walk with the Lord Jesus today in blessed, sweet serenity 
and that you'll press through that hard shell of your outer self that seeks to keep you from knowing the Most High, and you'll begin to experience in your relationship with Him things you've never known possible. Now, I love you, friends. As Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.